Day two of the 12 days of MLB rankings is finally here. And of course that means it's time for the first baseman to be ranked. The best first baseman from every team as I do for every single position up until Christmas day when I do the top 50 players in Major League Baseball. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that content coming at you. Drop a like on the video for the crazy amount of work that goes into this. And without further ado, let's get going into the first base rankings. Getting to start today at number 31, Chicago Cubs first baseman, Matt Mervis. I honestly don't expect Mervis to be the starting first baseman going into the season for the Chicago Cubs, they simply have to get a better one because right now he is coming in at the bottom of this list. We saw him play about 27 games last year and it was fairly unimpressive. Three home runs, two doubles, 11 RBIs, hitting 167 with a 242 on base, 289 slugging, and a 531 OPS. For a 26-year-old essentially rookie, you just are expecting a little bit more out of Mervis and he didn't give it to you last year. So right now he's coming in at number 31. Next up at number 30, Milwaukee Brewers new first baseman, Jake Bowers. Bowers had some decent success at times last year with the New York Yankees, but for a guy that's going to be playing every day at first base for the Brewers, most likely, just not really that high up on the list. 12 homers, 15 doubles, and 30 RBIs last year in 84 games for the Yankees, hitting 202 with a 279 on base, 413 slugging, gave him a 693 OPS, but an OPS plus at 87 really doesn't cut it at first base. Coming in at number 29, newly acquired first baseman of the Pittsburgh Pirates, formerly of the Brewers, Rowdy Telez. Rowdy is a guy that could totally turn it around, and I really wouldn't be surprised. He had 35 home runs back in 2022 and is a barrel king, but last year with the Brewers, he was pretty abysmal to the point where they eventually DFA'd him. 13 homers, 9 doubles, 47 RBIs, 215 average, 291 on base, 376 slugging, and a 667 OPS for an OPS plus 82. I put him a little bit higher than the other two guys because he does have that success in the past, but overall, Rowdy has been a little disappointing. For the 28th best first baseman in Major League Baseball, we're heading to the nation's capital, Washington, to talk about Joe. Joey Manessas. Joey Baseball had a crazy rookie season, but came back to earth a little bit in 2023. While the home run numbers definitely weren't that great, he still did hit 36 doubles with those 13 homers to drive an 89. 275 average, 321 on base, 401 slugging, and a 722 OPS. Gave him an OPS plus at 99. Nessus can also play a little bit in the outfield if you need him to. He's basically a league average hitter, and when you're talking about the first base position where offense is kind of just stellar from everybody, it's hard to find his way up this list. The big biggest drop in today's video comes in at number 27, and that's going to be Astros first baseman Jose Abreu. Yeah, this might be the beginning of the end for Jose Abreu. Going into his 37-year-old season, the worst year of his career last year, 18 homers, 23 doubles, 90 RBIs, pretty much only because he was hitting in the middle of the order for the Houston Astros. 237 average, 296 on base, 383 slugging, and a 680 OPS for a career worst season, 87 OPS plus. Everything was down, just looked older. Someone who I thought was going to pop off in Houston ended up being a bit of a liability for this team. There's still a world where he bounces back because it's just so easy to put up power numbers in that stadium, but I'm not feeling confident about Jose Abreu going into the 2024 season. Just missing out on the top 25, coming in at number 26, White Sox first baseman, Andrew Vaughn. It feels like we're all waiting for the Andrew Vaughn breakout. Could this be the season? Maybe. It finally feels like the first season where he's going to be playing first base pretty much every single day. No more outfield for him, and that will probably help his game. The projections still love him, and I mean, I mean, granted, he was about a league average hitter last year. 21 homers, 30 doubles, 80 RBIs, hitting 258 with a 314 on base, 429 slugging, and a 743 OPS. Gave him an OPS plus at 101. The stuff is definitely still there, just waiting for that breakout. Could this be the year for Andrew Vaughn? We'll have to wait and see. Getting the top 25 started at the number 25 spot, Ryan Noda of the Oakland A's. Noda is an on-base king. He also strikes out at a crazy high rate. 34% strikeout rate last year to a 15.6% walk rate. Makes for some funny numbers when you look at his slash line, like a 229 average, but with a 364 on base, ended up giving him a 770 slugging for the season. That's an OPS plus of 121. 16 homers, 22 doubles, 54 RBIs were pretty solid across the board and 128 for Oakland. He's going to be an on-base king forever, but the strikeout rate does scare me, and just the fact that he's on the A's always makes me doubt it a little bit. Feels like that could have been a career season for Noda, which is why I have him a little bit lower down on today's video. At number 24, we've got a player at a new position, a little bit shocking, but Chris Bryant of the Colorado Rockies will be their first baseman. I actually love this move for Chris Bryant in his career. This could completely save him. A guy who constantly gets injured, not really going to be playing the outfield anymore. Stick him at first base, you might be able to get a healthy season out of him. And if you do get a healthy season out of him, 
He is a plus offensive player, but last year was really concerning. 80 games, 10 homers, 10 doubles, 31 RBIs, with a 233 average, 313 on base, 367 slugging, and a 680 OPS for an OPS plus of 76. If you're putting up those abysmal of numbers in Colorado, it's hard to get excited about what you could see the next year. And for Chris Bryant right now, he's kind of in a situation where I need to see him prove it. Haven't seen him play a healthy season the last two years. Till he does, Chris Bryant stays down. For the 23rd best first baseman in Major League baseball los angeles angels first round pick last year nolan shanuel admittedly i am a little bit more of a shanuel hater than most and it's simply because of the fact that he's just not gonna hit many home runs never been a big power guy but he is an on-base machine he's never gonna strike out and we did see that last year in the small sample of 29 games where he had a 15.2 percent walk rate and a 14.4 percent strikeout rate that alone makes him a major league player very capable major league player and he's gonna be a guy who hits for a pretty high average 275 last year so even with the lack of power only one homer and three doubles in those 29 games he still finished with an ops plus at 103 which is basically league average and that was as a 21 year old rookie so there's room for growth here until i see those power numbers go up it's going to be hard for him to move up this list for me but with a really high floor sean duell is going to be a pretty solid first baseman for the angels coming in at the number 22 spot jake cronenworth of the san diego padres cronenworth playing first base hurts his value in my rankings because just at this position he's never going to be a premium guy just doesn't have the power doesn't have the offensive numbers to be able to jump a lot of the other first basemen on this list. And going into his 30-year-old season, after the worst season of his career, where every single year he has gotten worse and worse in terms of offensive production, I'm not feeling too great about Jake Cronenworth. The guy who had been very useful in the past was a bit of a problem last year for the Padres, where in 127 games, he hit 229 with a 312 on base, 378 slugging, and a 689 OPS with little to no power in a park where it's hard for lefties to hit a lot of home runs. Don't feel great about Jake Cronenworth going into next year. His values when he's a utility man and if they're going to use him at first it hurts him a bit just missing on the top 20 at number 21 i've got lamont wade jr of the san francisco giants lamont wade of course going to be in a platoon with wilmer flores you could basically package these two guys together when you do you get a great first baseman individually you have a platoon guy who still hits for plus power in 135 games last year just over 500 plate appearances lamont wade hit 17 homers 14 doubles for 45 rbis of course he's kind of their leadoff man when he plays so that's why the rbi number is low 256 average but a 373 on base with a 417 slugging gave him a 790 ops for an ops plus at 119 high walk rate guy again 14.6 percent walk rate only an 18 percent k rate lamont wade jr has a place it's in san francisco in that platoon he's super useful in the top 20 started at the number 20 spot new york yankees first baseman anthony rizzo rizzo is dropping down quite a bit in my rankings and to be fair there's reason behind it it was an injury riddled season for him last year but we did start to see him take a few steps back a little bit 12 homers 14 doubles and 41 rbis were just not some of the better numbers of his career even only in 100 games 244 average 328 on base 378 slugging and 706 ops for an ops plus at 94 hope rizzo comes back healthy i do love anthony rizzo even though he is a new york yankee i want him to do well but until i start to see him play a little bit better going into his 34 year old season i'm gonna be a bit of a hater here and put him at number 20 next up at the number 19 spot miami marlins first baseman josh bell i feel like i'm a little bit harsh here on josh bell where i placed him because he actually was fantastic with the marlins last year in 53 games it's just as a whole his season was about league average and we do know that miami plays big so i don't know how realistic it is for josh bell to put up those power numbers like he did in that small sample as a whole last year in 150 games 22 homers 28 doubles 74 rbis hitting 247 with a 325 on base 419 slugging and a 744 ops but all those numbers were just simply better in miami in about half the games so it depends what version of josh bell we see if we see the miami version you're looking at a guy who gets back to his last year ranking around that 12 to 10 range but as a whole last year based on what we've seen i did have to bump him down a little bit to 19 speaking of someone that was tough to rank alex kirilov was in a platoon last year could be getting a little more playing time this season looked great down the stretch just want to see a little bit more before i bump him up in 88 games kirilov hit 270 with a 348 on base 445 slugging for a 793 ops ops plus at 117 hits the ball hard barrel god 11 homers 14 doubles 41 rbis did not walk much and does strike out a little bit more than you'd like but there's definitely guts there for alex kirilov to be a very valuable piece to this minnesota twins team in the 2024 season we'll just have to wait and see oh no our king rankings darling from the last year coming in at number 17 ty france of the seattle mariners yeah ty france 
just had to drop him down a bit. Last year was pretty bad. And when you see how he gets on base a lot, like why his on base percentage is so high, it's mostly because he's been getting hit by pitch and the numbers just weren't really great. Also insane, he got hit by 34 pitches last year. That's incredibly high. 12 homers, 32 doubles, 58 RBIs. Like, ew, yikes. With a 250 average, 337 on base, 366 slugging, and a 703 OPS. For an OPS plus at 99. Maybe I'm being a little harsh because the three prior seasons, this guy was chilling with an OPS plus around the 125, 130. 30 range, but there seemed to be a big step back last year. Seems like he got figured out a little bit, and I am a bit cautious going into this next season about what Ty France is going to be able to do. Next up at number 16, Detroit Tigers first baseman Spencer Torkelson. Torkelson played in almost every game last year, played in 159, and honestly, had a great season from the counting numbers perspective. 31 homers, 34 doubles, 94 RBIs as a 23-year-old, hitting 233 with a 313 on base, 446 slugging, and a 758 OPS for an OPS plus at 105. Torkelson is primed for a breakout season where he could be a top 10 first baseman by the end of the year. He does all the things that you love, that you want to see from your good players. He started to walk a little bit more. The strikeouts, while they're still 25%, he does have a great eye, and the power finally started to show up. When you hit 30 homers and 30 doubles in Detroit, you've got my attention. So yeah, the OPS doesn't jump off the page at 758, but based on the park he plays in, and how young he is, and how hyped up he's been, I'm confident Torkelson could be a top 10 first baseman by the end of the year. Right at the halfway point here, at number 15, newly acquired Reds first baseman, Jamer Candelario. Gotta assume Candelario is gonna be the everyday first baseman with the plethora that they have at third base. And honestly, I love Candelario in this park. A guy who has always hit the ball hard, always shown some pretty decent power potential. He's now gonna be in a band box. One of the easiest places for a lefty to hit a home run in all of Major League Baseball, coming off a great season again. 140 games, 22 homers, 39 doubles, 70 RBIs, even stole eight bases, hitting 251 with a 336 on base, 471 slugging and 807 OPS for an OPS plus at 119. A lot of those doubles from Nationals Park are going to turn into home runs in Cincinnati. Switch hitter, like there's a lot of things to love about Candelario and the Reds. Feels like a match made in heaven. Next up at the number 14 spot, I've got Orioles first baseman Ryan Mountcastle. Someone who, if he played in a different park, would be putting up 30 home runs a year and his numbers would be looking differently. But because he plays in Baltimore, where it is so hard for righties to hit for power right now, I do have to drop him down a little bit. Because if you look back to the 2021 season, Mountcastle put up 33 homers in Baltimore. Now that they moved the fences back to an insane depth in left, we did only see 18 homers and 21 doubles from him last year. But he did hit 270 with a 328 on base, 452 slugging, and a 779 OPS with an OPS plus at 117, the best of his career in a full season. So it's weird to say that someone had less power and ended up moving up my rankings, but Mountcastle is a very good player. Someone who I wouldn't be surprised if the Orioles look to maybe trade to get some pitching. Josh Naylor of the Cleveland Guardians is up next Next, coming in at number 13, someone who is a little bit slept on. It's a really good player. Another, Barrel King, actually plays a pretty decent first base as well. And in 121 games last year, just under 500 plate appearances, saw him hit 17 homers, 31 doubles, 97 RBIs with 10 stolen bases, hitting 308 with a 354 on base, 489 slugging, and 842 OPS for an OPS plus at 133. After he put up very similar numbers in the 2022 season, doesn't strike out, cut the strikeout rate to 13.7%. That's disgusting. With a walk rate just under seven. Josh Naylor is a very weird player. He's got pop. Doesn't strike out. Hit for average last year. Josh Naylor's pretty good. Keep an eye out for him in Cleveland. Solid, solid player. He'll also be playing with his brother every day. For the 12th best first baseman in Major League Baseball, you might have forgot about him because he was hurt last year. I'm going with Reese Hoskins. Not currently on a team, but he'll be starting for somebody. The last time we saw Hoskins play, 30 homers, 33 doubles, 79 RBIs, pretty solid. With a 246 average, 332 on base, 462 slugging, and a 794 OPS for an OPS plus at 123. These numbers have never lived up to that first rookie year that we saw where he hit 18 homers in 50 games, but Hoskins has plus power, gets on base, just strike out a bit, but is a very solid offensive player. Put him down a little bit just because he's coming off a major knee injury. Got to see what he looks like after that injury before I start bumping him up again. But Hoskins has big power. Should be useful for someone next season. Just missing on the top 10 at number 11, another guy who just was hurt last year. Only got to see him play 61 games. That's going to be Vinny P, Vinny Pasquantino of the Kansas City Royals. I might be a little high here on Vinny P, but I just love the build of this guy and how he projects. A lot of people do. 
on base king, barrel king. I think Foolish Baseball did a video on him last season about how interesting he is, where his numbers kind of profile similarly to what you saw of Freddie Freeman. They're not the same, but you can see similarities. And in those 61 games, he did have nine homers, 17 doubles, and 26 RBIs with a 10% walk rate and a 12% strikeout rate. Like, that's pretty disgusting. The Pasquatch should be back, should be healthy next season for the Kansas City Royals, and I expect big things out of him. Getting the top 10 started at the number 10 spot, World Series champion Nathaniel Lowe. Lowe did not have as much of a monster season as he did in 2022, but still very, very good and very productive. Won a gold glove on the defensive side of things and hit 17 homers with 38 doubles, 82 RBIs, hitting 262 with a 360 on base, 414 slugging, and a 775 OPS for an OPS plus at 111. Lowe is just straight up a really good player. Mashes, crushes it, gets on base, doesn't strike out much. Like, he may not be the sexiest of first baseman, but Nathaniel Lowe is a very, very good one. Top 10 for sure. Newcomer into the top 10 here at number nine, Tristan Casas of the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, Tristan Casas had a really impressive rookie season to where he finished third in the Rookie of the Year voting. 132 games, 24 homers, 21 doubles, 65 RBIs, hitting 263 with a 367 on base, 490 slugging, and 856 OPS for an OPS plus at 129. It took him a while, but Casas heated up in the second half, and you finally saw that top prospect pedigree come through. Like, Casas in the first half had a 728 OPS. In the last 54 games of the season, he hit 317 with a 1034 OPS. You find that middle ground, you're looking at a top 10 first baseman, someone who could actually even get higher. Casas is legit good. Dropping down a little bit in my rankings, at number eight, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Oh, Canada, don't hate me. But you know he didn't play that well last year. It's now the second straight season we've seen the power numbers drop a bit for Vlad. Going from that 601 slugging in 2021 to 444 last year. In 156 games, 26 homers, 30 doubles, 94 RBIs. Like, those are still good numbers. He's a top 10 first baseman. I'm not saying he's bad. He's still very good. 264 average, 345 on base, 444 slugging with a 788 OPS for an OPS plus of 117. Those numbers are just simply not what we saw in 2021 or 2022. They were more indicative of his rookie season or in the COVID year. There's totally a world where Vlad goes back to hitting 40 plus home runs a season, but until we see it, I do have to drop him down a little bit. He just simply wasn't one of the elite first basemen last year, but he's still really good. Number eight, this is a great spot to be. Just play better, Vlad, and you go all the way back up again that quickly. You're 25. He's gross. Happy to give this guy a little bit of a boost in the rankings. Coming in at number seven, Arizona Diamondbacks first baseman Christian Walker. Second straight season of 30 plus home runs. Also had 36 doubles with 103 RBIs and sneaky stole 11 bases. Hitting 258 with a 333 on base, 493 slugging and an 830 OPS for an OPS plus at 123. It was the best year of his career. He got MVP votes. He won a gold glove for the second straight season because of course he did. He's disgusting in the field. Helped lead this team to the World Series. Doesn't strike out. Gets on base. Like there's nothing not to like about Christian Walker. He is a top 10 first baseman in the game. He's one of the better ones. Put that power, you put that bat with that glove. I love him at number seven here. Also, former South Carolina Gamecock, shout out my college. Just missing on the top five, coming in at number six, Yandy Diaz of the Tampa Bay Rays. Yandy, whoo, what a year he had last season. He was one of the best first basemen in the entire league. Does it a little bit different than most of these other guys, though. Not necessarily big in the power numbers. I mean, last year, that was the best power season of his career, so that's kind of what altered things for him. But he's a high average on-base machine. 2023, though, again, career season, 22 homers, 35 doubles, 78 RBIs, hitting 330, which was an American League best, 410 on base, 522 slugging, and a 932 OPS for a whopping 158 OPS. OPS plus, woo, finished sixth in the MVP voting, made the all-star team, won the silver slugger, 10% walk rate, 15% strikeout rate. Yandi had a bonkers season to the point where I almost considered putting him in the top five. Yandi does this again. I mean, you're looking at one of the elite first basemen in the league. That was disgusting what he did last season. Those muscles are finally paying off for Yandi. We're seeing the power come through. All right, getting the top five started at the number five spot, Paul Goldschmidt of the St. Louis Cardinals. Had to knock him down a bit. He was pretty not great last season, especially in the second half where he looked not good. He looked tired and he looked old for the first time in his career. I mean, the first half of the year, he put up an 844 OPS. You're like, oh, Paul Goldschmidt's still him. And in the second half, 763. So as a total, his numbers don't look bad. And they weren't. He didn't have a bad season. 268 average, 363 on base, 447 slugging with an 810 OPS. Like, those are solid numbers. It's just not the MVP level that we saw in the past. And it kind of was indicative of maybe Paul Goldschmidt's getting a little older. He did finish with 25 homers, 31 doubles, and 80 RBIs with 11 stolen bases. But it just wasn't the same as we had seen even as recent as 2022 so Paul Goldschmidt did have to go down a little bit here got him at number five staying weirdly at the exact same spot he always has been New York Mets first baseman Pete Alonso. Alonso weirdly hit for like 
a super low average last year, 217. Don't expect that to be the norm. And I don't think the numbers expect him to hit that low either. But he put up another season of 40 plus homers. We saw him hit 46 last year with 118 RBIs, 318 on base, 504 slugging, 821 OPS for an OPS plus at 122. Power is still elite. Some of the best in all of baseball. He just like wasn't getting singles last year. He couldn't get any hits. And I expect that luck to turn back his way next season. A guy who's more of a 240, 250 hitter rather than 217. I'm not bumping Pete down. Number four, I think is a fair spot for arguably the best home run hitter in the game. Next up at number three, new position for the guy, Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper is obviously disgusting. 126 games last year. Like I think at the first base position, honestly, Harper hurt a little bit because he doesn't get to show off that crazy arm that he had in right field. And he was actually a pretty good right fielder. That being said, Harper's still disgusting. And when we saw him finally get healthy in the second half, he did put up some crazy numbers, which I'll tell you about in a second. Overall on the season, 126 games, 21 homers, 29 doubles, 72 RBIs with 11 stolen bases hitting 293 with a 401 on base 499 slugging and a 900 ops for an ops plus at 146 14.7 percent walk rate 21 percent k rate like these are disgusting numbers the power is going to come back though we saw it in the second half which like i said i'm going to tell you about those numbers now in the second half in 70 games harper hit 18 homers 15 doubles 49 rbis with a 296 average 413 on base 583 slugging that's what you expect more of and a 996 ops which is why harper is going to be here at number three just missing on the number one spot at number two i gotta give it to the atlanta braves first baseman matt olson what he did last year was absolutely crazy the numbers were out of control major league best 54 homers and 139 rbis like what 283 average with a 389 on base and a 604 slugging gave him an ops at 993 an ops plus at 162 all-star game mvp he finished fourth won the silver slugger at the position like matt olson literally was playing out of his mind he still doesn't strike out like almost at all 23% K rate with a 14% walk rate and 50 homers and 130 RBIs and a 283 average like what is this year what is this season Matt Olsen is not just one of the best first basemen in the game he's one of the best players gotta put him here at number two though because the guy at number one is just a little bit better and Braves fans you know him well it's gonna be Freddie Freeman of the Los Angeles Dodgers coming in as the best first baseman in the league finished third in the MVP voting one spot ahead of Matt Olsen and put up a crazy good year again I mean this guy's a Hall of Famer. 161 games last year, 29 homers, 59 doubles to lead off Major League Baseball with 102 RBIs and 23 stolen bases. Like, what? What are you doing? 331 average, 410 on base, 567 slugging, 976 OPS. Freddie Freeman is just, he's so, he's so crazy good. 10% walk rate, 16% strikeout rate, hits the ball to all fields, hits for power. They're adding Shohei Otani to this lineup. Like, I don't really care how old Freddie Freeman is. His game's just never really going to deteriorate, it feels like. And even with hitting about, what, 20 less home runs than Matt Olsen? still was just better that's how good freddie freeman is that's how much of a freak he is at the position one of the best players in the league and definitely the best first baseman in major league baseball yeah first base was tough but there they are the rankings for the best first baseman for every team in major league baseball going into the 2024 season i'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the rankings coming at you this holiday season follow me on all my social media at giraffe nick mark links are in the description and that's where i'll wrap it up for you guys you know the drill from here on out this is going to be the playlist for the 12 days of MLB rankings for this season and this will be last year's in case you want to check back at how I did thank you guys so much for the amazing support and for watching the rankings as always and I'll catch you tomorrow for the second base rankings bye